Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third week of English Literature and Language, Unit 1. So first of all, I'd like to give a brief summary of the things that were discussed prior. So until now, we finished the following text. We finished Ro Red Roses and the Medicine Bag, and we discussed the plot structure in addition to the main idea evident throughout the text. However, for the following week, we shall discuss the following. The first lesson will reflect the following objectives. We shall explain run-on sentences and examine the sentences and add the correct fanboys to produce a meaningful sentence. So in other words, this week will focus primary on, on writing. So we will discuss what run-on sentences are and how to avoid run-on sentences. In addition, we shall add the, the effect or the impact of run-on sentences on the person reading the text. So how a meaning or uh, a co the cohesion of the text may be lost because of run-on sentences. This all will be discussed in details in the first lesson, in addition to uh, fanboys. However, I want you to refer to the interactive activities that are evident on your, on your um, BC the lesson page, and I'd like you to try and do them on your own before starting the lesson so that you have an idea of where you stand in terms of punctuation errors. In addition, you will find a link attached that will direct you to a quiz where you can try and add the correct fanboy and the correct comma in the right place. So appropriate punctuations that create a meaningful sentence. Moreover, the ATLs that will be addressed throughout this lesson include the following communication, as we will explain and discuss and communicate with one another. Uh, in addition, I might ask random students to come up to the board and place the comma in the appropriate place. And again, again, this is the, this is just so that all of you uh, interact with me inside of the classroom. And also, it's not to um, make someone feel a little bit more anxious to make someone feel anxious it is all to test your ability to place the correct commas at the end of the day this is for your benefit moreover the second atl includes thinking critical thinking okay and th this will be covered in the first lesson whereas in the second lesson we shall discuss the following objectives discuss the uses of commas use the appropriate punctuation marks to produce a cohesive paragraph so Instead of sentences, now we're going to delve in depth in, uh, in terms of paragraphs. So sometimes, and I've seen this happen throughout the years, um, students can't differentiate between a normal sentence and a paragraph. And they tend to memorize how it is done if it were a sentence, and they, forgot, they forget to apply it in a paragraph. So moreover, I created a lesson that highlights how to put the proper punctuation marks within a paragraph. So we'll discuss eight rules of placing a comma, and then we shall uh, it, we shall apply our knowledge and understanding by placing it in a paragraph, okay? Our ATLs will include also the following, communication and critical thinking, because you need to analyze the paragraph and deduce which, which where a full sentence, a compound sentence, a complex sentence is there so that you can place the commas properly. The third lesson highlights the following. You will listen to uh, Apache's Girls, uh, girls pass, uh, Rights to Passage and take uh, effective notes. So you're going to watch a video about uh, Apache girls and their rights to passage. You'll understand what this signifies after watching the video. Uh, moreover, you will identify the main idea and how her actions express her culture. As all of you remember that this is related to our global context, personal and cultural expression. So we will discuss this and reflect this in um, this lesson. Uh, moreover, we shall differentiate between two forms of uh, text types. So you will compare and contrast between for in, uh, Apache's girls' rights to passage and uh, the medicine bag or red roses. So you will create a comparative, okay? Um, I might ask you to create an outline or to create a very small essay in the form of a comparative essay. And we shall discuss this in depth throughout the lesson. Now, the fourth lesson indicates the following. 
Uh, the following objectives include outlining the structure of a nonfiction narrative and use an organizational structure to create an introduction to a nonfiction narrative. So by now, all of you are aware that the assessment is the formative and the summative assessment will be nonfiction narrative. So in this lesson, I shall explain what a nonfiction narrative is, although I have done prior or touched upon it at least, and briefly indicated the elements of a nonfiction narrative. Here we will uh, explicitly, implicitly teach it um, and indicate the elements that are going to be evident throughout the entire narrative. However, as you can see here, the only thing that we shall discuss is the introduction. So in this lesson, I will outline the structure in general of a nonfiction narrative. What does introduction include? The body and the conclusion in direct relation with the TSR. The TSR stands for the task specific rubric, which means how are we assessing you and on what grounds? So uh, it, the task specific rubric tells you exactly how to get an eight if you abide to the points specifically uh, mentioned in the uh, strands. Moreover, after we reflect the things that are required of you in the introduction, we shall create an outline only for the introduction and we shall write one together. So in other words, this class is not a formative assessment. It is only a description and a detailed explanation of how to write an introduction to a nonfiction narrative. We will focus on the following ATL skills, communication and creative thinking. Creative thinking, um, because a nonfiction narrative is about your experience and your story, and you need to be creative in terms of writing and perhaps in using language. You might apply diverse literary devices such as imagery, symbolism, uh, personification, a simile, metaphor, and many others in order to engage the audience through the reading experience. So we shall discuss this more uh, throughout the lesson. All right, so all in all, we're going to have only four lessons this week because as all of you know, the fifth lesson or on Thursday is going to be um, orientation uh, or we're going to meet your parents. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna have only four lessons. The first lesson again is going to be about common writing errors. This will be the first lesson. The second lesson is also a continuation of it because it also focuses on using commas uh, properly. Uh, however, uh, in the form of paragraphs, the third lesson, it, we're going to refer back to the book. And the fifth lesson includes you uh, being introduced to the structure of a nonfiction narrative, preparing you for the actual summative, which will occur at the end of the unit. I hope everyone has a splendid week and have a, a lovely week.